So I finally took my very first SIV course. Pretty wild, huh? All right, so before we get into it, you're probably wondering what does SIV stand for? Well, it's actually a French acronym. Let me look it up. Okay, I got it here. Let's see. Simulation d'incident en vol. Simulation d'incident en vol. Simulate. Simulation d'incident en vol. Anyway, it translates to simulated incident in flight. And so that's really it. It's a safety course. You essentially get towed up behind a boat. In this case, it was without a motor, just a paragliding harness and a paragliding wing. They tow you up behind a boat over water and you simulate different incidents. So things like collapses, spins, spirals, things like that. Uh, and you do that all under the um, supervision of an instructor. So people are on the ground giving you radio commands and uh, you basically learn how to recover from these things in a controlled environment. So I actually went down to Florida and did my first SIV with the guys at Skylab. So that's run by Andrew Fuller and Leah Catullo. Um, awesome instruction. I was actually friends with both of these um, people before I went down there, but um, got a call from them, got an invite to come down and check out the course, and I did, and I could not have been happier with the instruction, the equipment, everything was awesome. Truly could not have been happier with it. Unfortunately, I was only able to spend one day down at the uh, SIV with these guys, um, but it actually ended up working out just fine since I was the only one there. I got about five or six toes in and we actually covered a lot. So I was able to get to full frontals, asymmetric frontals, beeline stalls. My first sat, I actually did a sat into a coconut spin into a full stall into a backfly, but that was kind of accidental and unfortunately that footage is gone. Also got through full stalls, the backfly, negative spins, and my first reserve throw. So unfortunately, the main camera that captures the wing, my leg camera, my GoPro Hero 7, um, is at the bottom of the lake right now. So on the very last run of the day, which actually was my reserve throw, some lines got wrapped around it when I was in the water and it got yanked off and it sunk to the bottom of the lake. So super big bummer that we don't have that footage anymore. Um, one, because I wanted to go back and learn from it and two, because I wanted to make a video about it for you guys. So luckily we still have all the head cam footage so we can still review that and um, let's just jump right into it. And this is gonna be my first SIV course, so something I've been putting off for a long time. This is day one, it might be my only day down here, so we're gonna try to get as many toes in as we can. I'm excited. See ya. Okay. So audio check and I'm clipped in. I'm ready to go. And even though I've launched hundreds of times, today I'm nervous. I don't know why. Um it's kinda creepy. So I can feel the line tensioning up actually, the boat's about to go. So I'm focusing from here on out. Okay guys, so here we go. I actually had to reset up for a forward here because the wind was being a little bit too inconsistent, but uh, I'm not gonna show you guys all my toe ups because although they're really fun in person, it makes for kind of a boring video. So I'll just give you guys an idea of what that looks like here. So uh, when you're setting up for a forward launch, you just wait for the line to tension up like it is right here. So the boat's taken off. And then they're going to start introducing hydraulic pressure on that winch, which is going to pull you forward. You're going to feel a little bit of pressure. Got pulled to the side here because the wind came up a little crooked. Just missed that cross, and then you're in the air. And then the rest of it is just a fun ride up. You just enjoy the scenery and wait to pin off. So once you get to a safe altitude, the boat is going to do a 180 degree turn, and that is your cue to pin off. So you're just going to grab that red handle right in front of you and pull it, and then you're free flying. So here's what that looks like. Okay, now all you do is pretty much hang out and wait for them to reel that tow line back in. And once that tow line gets all the way back into the boat, uh, you start your run. So that's pretty much how every single tow goes. So every tow starts like that. They tow you up to a safe altitude over a safe area of the lake, taking into account wind, all that. And then you just hang out after you pin off and wait for instruction on how to start your run. 
So here we go, guys. I'm actually about to do my very first um, full frontal collapse. So Andy's going to give me radio commands here on what to do. He's going to tell me to grab my A's and just yank them down. So we actually do um, a quick yank on them just to get a feel for what the wing does after you get a frontal. We're going to pull them down and hold them, and we're going to do that asymmetrically too. So grabbing your A-lines, which are on the front, pull and hold them on either side, see how the wing reacts, learn how to weight shift to counteract it, and learn how to weight shift into it to get into a spiral to learn how to get out of that. There you go guys that was my first SIV run so we were actually able to get uh, six of these toes in this day before it got too windy and we had to stop so let's check out some of the other stuff I learned experience I fucking needed right there that was humbling with the uh, the amount of like I didn't expect the wing to go out of like my vision which scared me you know what's even cooler about that what you forgot to put your trimmers down you need to pull stalls trimmers out bud is that why they were so fucking they were violent as gangster. fuck dude <laughs>
Okay, guys, that was it. Just my last run of the day. Boat's coming to get me. I got a reserve throw ahead of me. So, whoo! Boat get downwind to me a little bit, and then here we go. That's all she wrote. Grab, cross, throw. Grab, cross, throw. So that was the most scared I've ever been in this sport ever. The actual reserve throw wasn't scary, coming down wasn't scary, but after I hit the water, um, even though I was ready for the win and I knew that the reserve might open back up, I really wasn't prepared, okay? So I hit the water, things were fine, and the second that reserve chute opened up and started yanking me backwards, lines wrapped around my neck, around my helmet, pulled my head under behind me, um, it terrified me. And I, even though I was as prepared as I thought I could have been, uh, I wasn't. I had redundant flotation on, so the harness that I was wearing actually uh, had flotation kind of built into it. It floats. Um, so I had a redundant PFD on, but actually I reached for that and pulled it and something broke and it failed. So it didn't pierce the CO2 and it never inflated. So that failed on me. I really truly believe that if we had not done this in a controlled environment, in an SIV course, um, without that boat there, I, I believe that would have been it. So this was the first time I truly felt out of control of the situation, uh, and it was horrifying. I was actually shaking up the rest of the day from that. So if you guys remember, I actually did a video where I jumped into a pool with a paramotor harness on testing different flotations. Um, that experience was very eye-opening when it comes to water landing as a safety, uh, but this was much more eye-opening. This was truly horrifying for me. It scared the hell out of me. So if you guys take away anything from watching that reserve throw, just remember, paragliding or paramotoring in water do not mix. Um, it can go pretty horrible. But this is exactly why you do an SIV course. So obviously you don't want to be doing practice reserve throws over a lake without being in an SIV course or having a safety boat around. Um, but I actually waited for an SIV to even try my first sat. So I had progressed kind of naturally through wing overs and barrel rolls, but I knew the penalty for failure for a sat was really high. And although I lost the footage on this, right, I actually did mess up the first couple sats. So I did do a coconut spin and I actually saved myself. So I did a coconut spin, which is just you enter a sat too fast and spin. And um, Andy on the radio was yelling, stall it, stall it, stall it. So without that, I would have gone hands up. Um, but with him yelling in my ear to stall it, I was actually able to stall out of that coconut spin. Once I got into a stall, I felt relatively comfortable looking up at the wing. I was able to come, find backfly, and then finally release into that and keep flying. So had I not learned the stall and the backfly prior to doing my sats, right, in an SIV course, I don't know what I would have done. So this is exactly why you guys should take an SIV course. Um, it was the single greatest learning experience since actually training for me. And I just could not be more happy with the way it went. So huge thank you to Andrew Fuller and Leah Catullo. Instruction was top shelf. The equipment was amazing. Location was amazing. I could not be happier with the way it went. So thank you guys very much. If you guys have questions or are interested in taking an SIV with the guys at Skylab down in Florida, reach out to Andrew Fuller or Leah Catullo. Um, Facebook, Instagram, they're pretty easy to get a hold of. 
you guys can also reach out to me and I can get you in contact with them. And I think I'm gonna cut this one here. Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Tom Kubot, all that jazz. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace. Like you see, how it, you know, once you, you full stall it, you can settle under it. Yeah. And it's full stall, and the wing's thrashing around. Yeah. But it's fine. Yeah. You come up in a tail slide. Yeah. On that last one. That felt great. I could see how you could get good at that. I mean, like, that's what my, I did three up there. So, I, like, when I was down, I was low. But, like, what I didn't expect was how much I'd have to, like, actually, like, use my triceps to really hold that. Mm -hmm. And so, when I got that on the last one, I was like, all right, I'm fucking holding it no matter what. And what's the wing going to do? It's just going to sit there. Right. So, I did that, and that helped a lot. And then, when I came with the tail slide on that last one, I felt it, like, I felt it slip into it uh -huh. a little more.